having ferried the Golden Company to King's Landing, their commander, Harry Strickland views the city from the stern of the silence, with Euron smiling at his calm nature and his success in fulfilling Circe's wishes. Contented with himself, he visits his hostage, Yara, in his quarters. She asks Euron why he has not killed her, to which Euron sarcastically remarks upon their familial status as the last living Greyjoys, casually excluding Theon due to his castration. He then states that he will bore himself if he kills Yara, who he expresses glee at venting his chatter to. She correctly assumes they have returned to King's Landing, having ferried the Golden Company from Essos to fight for Cersei. She rebuffs an offer of drink from her uncle, before stating that he has picked the losing side. However, Euron arrogantly states that he will simply leave the Queen of the Andals should it come to that, but he will lay with her first. He later introduces Strickland to Cersei, where it comes to light that Euron has killed some members of the company en route, due to someone cheating at dice. He at first states the Golden Company soldiers cheated, but then heavily implies he was the guilty party. Cersei is disappointed to hear that the company's elephants could not be brought due to the length of the voyage. Following Strickland's departure, Euron asks to speak privately with Cersei, which she rebuffs and maintains their agreement to wait until she claims Westeros. Although Euron is clearly frustrated, she states that he must earn her and that she would have executed him if not for his significance, to which Euron replies that since he delivered Marcella's murderers to her, and provided her with an army and a fleet, he deserves some form of concession for his loyalty. Somewhat wary and tempted by his arrogance, she permits him to lay with her. After their liaison, they remark on Robert Baratheon's sexual inability, despite his fondness for whores, after which Euron asks about Jamie's libido, much to the Queen's irritation. He then asks if he was satisfactory, to which Cersei replies that she is fond of his arrogance and promptly dismisses him. Before Euron leaves, however, he promises to put a prince in her womb, unaware she is already pregnant with Jamie's child. The liaison prevents Euron from his being aboard the Silence, where Theon rescues Yara, who reclaims the Iron Islands while her uncle is preoccupied with maintaining the Iron Fleet in preparation for Daenerys's attack. Euron launches a surprise attack on the Targaryen fleet returning from the north after the Battle of Winterfell. His Iron Fleet is able to kill Rhaegal and also destroys much of the Targaryen fleet using improved scorpions. Euron also captures Missandei and brings her back to King's Landing with Cersei, who lies to him that she is pregnant with his child, whose true father is Jaime. He later witnesses Missandei's execution atop the walls of King's Landing. When King's Landing is besieged, the Iron Fleet is caught off guard from the attack by Daenerys, who is riding Drogon, and is decimated. Euron himself is barely able to escape alive, jumping off the silence as it catches on fire, and reaches a shore where he finds Jaime Lannister trying to sneak into the Red Keep. He challenges Jaime to a duel and gravely wounds him, but is stabbed in the abdomen during the fight. Before dying of blood loss, he congratulates Jaime on killing another king and gloats that it was him who took out the king's lair. However, Euron's pleasure in killing Jaime is unfounded, since Jaime is later crushed by debris within the Red Keep before he can succumb to his wounds. 